How's it going RK Squad? It's been a while since I recorded the video in this part of the studio. Anyways, today we are going to talk about what tools, items, and other thingies you need to have when you start architecture school. Okay, before buying any of this, it is important to note that some schools don't even use manual drafting equipment anymore. So if you are in one of those schools, don't bother buying a T-square, which brings us to our first item on the list the t-square so when buying your own t-square you have a few things to consider one is the length of the t-square so me personally i prefer the 36 inch because it is the perfect size for drafting on a 20 by 30 tracing paper i find the 46 inch t-square to be too long the 36 inch t-square makes me feel like ichigo when he releases his bankai then his swords become smaller and then he becomes super fast so in a way the 36 inches make me draft super fast so kind of like my own bankai I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore man bankai anyways anime references aside the second thing you have to consider when buying a t-square is the material so there are two types of t-square materials one is acrylic and the other one is wood so when I was a first year architecture student I had a wooden t-square unfortunately it got stolen damn you t-square bandit anyways I had to buy another one but all I could buy was an acrylic t-square to be honest I prefer the acrylic one better since it is easier to clean and it is less prone to breaking I find that the wooden t-square I had was causing a lot of dark smudges on my plates although wooden t-squares are lighter and glide smoother on your paper I would recommend going for the more modern acrylic t-square okay now that we've got our square game on lock let's talk about triangles so when drafting manually the two main triangles that you need to have are the 30 60 triangle right here and the 45 degree triangle right here so a rule of thumb for the size of the triangles are they should be bigger than your hand but should not be bigger than two of your hands combined so aside from these triangles you can also buy an adjustable triangle which is my favorite triangle since you can set it to any angle you want you want 72 degrees boom you got 72 degrees i don't know what i was going for with that accent that's horrible and probably racist anywho just remember to keep in mind the rule of thumb when buying these triangles larger than one hand but smaller than two hands okay and I guess that is it for the ruler. So if you guys are wondering why my audio is so noisy, that's because there's like a storm happening outside and I apologize for um, static sounding audio. Let's, let us proceed. Okay, let's move on to curvy tools, which are the tools that you use to draw curves. So the only ones I had when I was a freshman architecture student are the compass and the French curves. But I really wish I also had this flexible ruler. That would have made everything easier. Moving on to the next item on our list, the tech pens. So when choosing tech pens, the only things you gotta worry about is the points or line weights of the pens. And maybe the brand. So let's first talk about the points. So when choosing tech pens, I usually just buy 3 points. I got a 0.2, a 0.4, and a 0.6, and that's pretty much the standard set that you will need. But if you got a lot of monies, you can buy a whole set from 0.1 to 0.8. As for the brands, just go for the popular ones like Rodring and Stadler. You really can't go wrong with those two brands. So aside from tech pens, you guys are also gonna need some pencils. So for pencils, I prefer these Stadler brand pencils cause they're blue and makes you look extra architecty. Is, is that even a word, architecty? So me personally, I only use two types of pencils. I use an H for my guidelines and a 2B for my main lines. So for those of you who do not know, H stands for hard, which means the graphite of this pencil is hard, meaning it will only write light strokes. So the higher the number beside the H, the lighter the mark it leaves. As for the B pencils, B stands for black and has the same numerical markation system as the H pencils, meaning the higher the number, the blacker the mark. So for example, you have a 2B pencil and an 8B pencil. So the 8B pencil is going to leave a blacker mark. With all that said, to be honest with you guys, I survived 4th year and 5th year architecture school just using a number 2 Mongol pencil. So yeah, don't overthink what pencils you guys buy. The less you have, the better because you won't spend that much time choosing which pencils to use. Alright, now that we've got our basic drawing materials down, let's talk about watercolor. So my personal favorite watercolor is the Prang branded watercolor. It is easy to use and it is very reliable when it comes to the solidity of the colors it leaves. So some cheap watercolors will usually leave splotchy colors, but this Prang brand has very nice and even coverage. 
So if you guys couldn't find any Prang branded watercolors, you could also buy Sakura branded ones. So these things pretty much perform the same as the Prang ones, but it is just a little bit more expensive. If you're a beginner at watercolors, I suggest that you guys also buy a six-piece brush set from Joy. So the bristles from this brand are very soft and great for watercoloring. They're also relatively cheap, so it's probably like three and a half, three and a half dollars for this whole six-piece set. So yeah, super affordable. Another thing that you guys are also gonna need are these water brushes, but they are a bit harder to use than regular brushes. So I wouldn't recommend this if you are just starting out using watercolors. Also, don't forget to buy a mixing plate. So this thing will help you out a lot. If I could just open it. Ah, dang it. One minute, 37 seconds later. And there we go, I got it open. So yeah, make sure to practice opening this before going to school and making a fool of yourselves. Practical advice from your boy, Liam. Moving on. And lastly, of course, you are going to need a laptop for all your research and beginner computer drafting courses. So here are a few key aspects to look for when buying a laptop. One is the size. A laptop with a 15-inch or smaller screen is great since you are going to be carrying this thing pretty much every day and you'll also be carrying a T-square and triangle. So yeah, buy a small laptop so that you save yourself some you know, some effort in carrying. So as for the processor, you guys are gonna wanna buy any laptop with an i5 and i7 9th generation processor if you want to be able to handle most CAD and BIM softwares. Then we also have the RAM, a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM at least so that you don't experience any lags and RAM shortage related errors. And lastly for the video card, go for a laptop with a GTX 1060 or higher GPU. This will ensure smooth scrolling with 3D related softwares. So if you guys want a more detailed breakdown of laptop specs, I made a video in the past about how to choose a laptop. You guys could just check it out. I'll put a link somewhere in the description and somewhere in the screen. Right, right. It's either, I can't remember, it's either here or here. And with that, I guess that is pretty much all the stuff that you are going to need for your first year in architecture. So if I miss some stuff like erasers, papers, and notebooks, and all those other things, you guys could go wrong with any of those. So I just decided to skip them. Also, if you guys are wondering what books you should buy, um, I suggest waiting for your instructors to tell you which books to buy. And also, I made a video on various books that architecture students should have. Link somewhere here. Anyways, before I end the video, I just want to thank all of you for helping me reach 100,000 subscribers. I never thought we would get here, guys. So yeah, I never would have gotten to 100,000 without you guys. So thank you, thank you. You, 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 especially you, thank you. Anyways, with that being said, just remember this RT Squad members. Fear of failure is a sign that you want to succeed and that you care about what you are doing. If you are not afraid, then it means you don't really care about succeeding either. Or you're just brave AF. Or have cold steel throwing through your veins. So, if you are feeling nervous about the course that you are in, i.e. architecture. Don't worry guys, I've been through that and it is completely normal. I'm sure you guys couldn't get through this and uh, don't worry, I'm gonna be your guide through architecture school. We're gonna get through this together. And that's it my dudes. Don't forget to like and leave a comment down below and click that subscribe button somewhere there to become an awesome member of the Archie Squad. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you on my next video. Flying peace!